So folks, welcome back. Um, hope you're enjoying the videos that have uh, been coming out recently and thanks for uh, watching, thanks for clicking like and clicking subscribe. So this morning um, I've had a couple of days uh, teaching um, out in the water and I was just putting the bag back together again. I like to keep everything nice and organised in between sessions. Uh, and I thought well this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys and girls out there uh, what I take with me on a day's fishing um, for the banks this is particularly for bank fishing okay um, the reservoir lock style stuff and uh, the competition stuff is uh, something I'll cover in another video because it's things vary a little bit we tend to take a lot more stuff out of us when we're competing um, but for the, uh, uh, the the bank stuff um, I've been asked a few times to show you what's inside my bag and um, so I just thought I'd run you through it and uh, give you a quick look at what I like to take out for a day's fishing. Right folks, this thing, um, you'll notice on top of the rods I've got, uh, on top of the bag, I've got two rod tubes there. These are identical rods, both nine foot, six, seven weights. Um, when you're out and about, accidents do happen. Um, always carry a spare rod. And also there are plenty of times where you might like to get uh, uh, two rods made up, one with say an intermediate, one with a floating line. So yeah, two rods, I tend to take the same rods out with me each, but they're pretty straightforward. It's pretty basic stuff that most people carry. Inside the box, right. Um, I like to keep things nice and tidy. All right? I like to know where things are and I can get my hands on them. So a few essentials or a couple of essentials you must have in your box. One of them is uh, glasses, sunglasses. Always, always, always for fly fishing. A pair of sunglasses stuck in there. And I always carry a spare pair as well. Just in case I lose a pair or they break or um, I might have a client out with me or someone that doesn't have a pair of glasses and more than welcome to borrow them. Polaroids are essential for fly fishing. Everybody has their preferences on lenses, etc. Um, but uh, for me, always ambers are the way to go. Okay, they're just best in low light and in high light. So instead of taking and carrying around and chopping and changing your glasses all day long, uh, ambers seem to be the best all round glasses. Um, reels, uh, I carry two reels um, as standard, uh, both the same brand. I like to carry. Again, everything the same brand because then it's easier to chop and change things, all right? It's easier to chop and change, especially when you're using cartridge systems. Um, and talking about the cartridges, I've got the cartridges set up here and already loaded and ready to go and marked up. So on the reels, I've actually got a couple of floaters on there. So I tend to use floaters the most, especially off the bank work. You don't use many sinking, fast sinking lines off the bank. In fact, I only carry the fast sinkers when I go to places like Walthamstow or Farmore, generally for... Chigbra, Black Dyke, Graf, and all those places that I fish off the bank. I rarely, well, I never need anything underneath the DI3, and I rarely use anything under a fast glass. As far as sinking line goes, you just you just don't need it um, from the banks. Um, so I've got a couple of fast glass lines there. I've got a 40 plus um, DI3, a 40 plus slow glass, and a 40 plus floater, mainly for the distance. I don't often use this, but it's nice having a bag. And then I've got a couple of my favourite, uh, uh, which would go to my floaters loaded up on the reels ready to go. These are all nicely marked up on the spools there. And again, organisation just makes things easy to find uh, when you're going through stuff. So you can lay your hands on things pretty quickly. Um, in this part of the bag here, I've got plenty of fluorocarbon and plenty of spare fluorocarbon. Um, eight pound um, is probably the one I use most throughout the season. Um, ten pound for pulling your lures and stuff. I have been using ten pound for the buzzers. Um, don't be afraid to use heavy decent fluoro for buzzers because the takes are just ripping and you don't want to be using light fluoro. There's a little bit of, um, there's some six pound there, eight pound and ten pound also in the G3, another um, tippet material that I really really love so I carry both of them. Um, Gink, essential if you're going to be doing a bit of dry fly work, so I always carry a pot of gink and I've normally got a spare in the car as well. Not that you get through much of this stuff, but there's always one in the bag. Uh, muslin, this is for greasing up your fly line, for um, adding a bit of float to the fly line as you've seen in my previous videos. I've always got those in there. And, uh, a couple of pots of mud, you'll have seen my last video making this stuff up. Uh, we're coming into the dry fly season, it won't be long now. The buzzers are starting to hatch and they're starting to be looking for the dries. It's that simple folks, I mean that's all I carry in the top section of the uh, of the bag. And we'll have a look at the bottom section, so let's just zip this back up again. I do like to tidy the bag up 
every time I come out after every session of a can I'm quite neat and tidy like that and uh, I do find it benefits me on the day when I want to find stuff quickly so the main compartment of the bag what's in the main compartment well first thing I've always got in there is a spare hat hat and glasses always for fly fishing uh, there's a towel there for cleaning everything up um, in here a packet of selection of indicators and it's something you use a lot in the small lakes um, I love fishing with the indicator I love fishing straight line buzzers I think you should be able to do a bit of everything and whatever you enjoy doing um, but there's plenty of days and these are very very good for clients as well if we're struggling on a day for one reason or other so I've got a selection of indicators there I tend to carry these little smaller ones for when they're calm we're just using single flies bigger stuff or when it's a little bit lumpy or when we're using two or three flies just a little variation in there depending on where we are and what we're doing but that's enough to take care of everything we're going to need um, top of the uh, bag up here of course in this top pocket is a priest and a marrow spoon um, essential and uh, you should carry one of these even if you are a catch and release angler because there will become occasions when you get a deep took fish or a fish won't go back and uh, you need to be able to dispatch it humanely and if you haven't got one in your bag and uh, you're struggling to find something to finish the fish with um, that's not fair on the fish um, also marrow spoon uh, is a, a must if you're killing fish take a sample a gut sample have a look see what they've been feeding on and i like these integrated um, priests and marrow spoons they're nice and easy to use there's two or three different brands out there that do this it saves carrying two tools around with you all in one so that's always in there um, fly boxes obviously we'll come to those in a second uh, there's a pair of scissors in there as well um, on my jacket okay so you can carry uh, you, you need to carry a selection of forceps and snips now I tend to carry these on the jacket they're just on the jacket all the time on these couple of zingers all right so they're easy to reach easy to get to um, and I've got a little drying patch there for all my dry flies okay so one of those little lamadou patches a pair of good forceps they don't have to be extra long but they do need to be they do need to meet up here and be usable obviously I do see some rubbishy stuff around and then on the other side there I've got um, because I compete as well so I've got my two gauges my um, bank fishing gauge that gives you hook sizes etc etc and the one for the lock style should I need it um, which tells me uh, maximum dressing size maximum hook size etc etc and then a decent pair of snips just to finish off your knots with and to when you're chopping and changing lines etc etc the snips just very very handy just for taking that bit of extra line off and cutting off but I do tend to keep mine on the jacket by all means keep them in the bag I just find it very handy I don't fill my pockets in my jacket with very much in fact in here all you're going to find inside these jacket pockets are again a little bit of mud uh, you know degreasant there and there's also in the jacket freeze there's another tub of muslin and some gink so you can see how much dry fly fishing I do throughout the season but that's about it inside my jacket pocket um, oh and of course essential nowadays bottle of sanitizer um, you've got to carry that everywhere with you so keep them inside your bag, keep them inside your jacket, it's completely up to you. Fly boxes, um, I like the clear fronted fly boxes. Um, I try to take for bank fishing, I take a selection of flies with me. Okay, I won't, uh, uh, it's not quite as crazy as my, um, uh, my lock style box, my competition box, which you'll see in a couple of weeks time when I get around to doing a video of it. Um, but this is, a selection of everything I'm going to need of all the waters around the country really when I'm fishing on the bank um, and again I know we're carrying a lot of stuff uh, this is over the top for your day-to-day -day angler who goes out once or twice a month you've got to remember that I'm out as standard three four five times a week um, and I can't afford to run out of anything when I'm with the clients. So I've got plenty of spares of everything in there. Before I get lots of messages saying, I oh, you only need one flight to catch the fish all year round, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sure you do, but uh, for me, I need to have a selection. So I keep them separate or I separate them to a way that makes sense to me. Um, so this box here has got all my weighted flies in them, all my gold-headed flies, all the bead-headed flies, all the stuff with weight, and obviously that equates to mainly being a, a lure box. Different shapes, sizes, colours, some good for 
Chigborough, some go for Grafham, some go for Black Dice, some go for all the small waters around the country, Eleanor, all sorts of places. But they're there, they're easy for me to get to, easy for me to reach. Same with these rest of these boxes. Um, selection of snakes and snake boobies in there. Um, these are still left over from, well, I would have been going to Walthamstow this time of year. A lot of snake boobies come into that a lot, but down here you can also see we've got little dial barks, we've got loads of dry flies. Um, here, a few apps, worms, same in here, a few, few worms. You've seen me tie all these videos on my videos, my fly time videos, but they're all put together in a way that makes sense to me, so that I know where everything is, and if I decide I want to change over, boom, it's ready to go. And I make sure that working flies, flies that are working at the moment, I've got backups of. I'm never going to go to a water and only have one fly. That's ridiculous. And at the same time, I'm not going to go to a water and carry every single fly I own. So um, it's a balance. Find yourself a balance with your boxes and organise them uh, to the way that suits you. I like these clear fronted boxes and I also like the, I also use the Witchwood double sided ones. They're all in my competition uh, box. They're a little bit heavier to carry. I don't want to put too much additional weight in the bag if I can help it uh, when I've got to sling this over my shoulder. Um, so that's that bit there and there, and I also carry this with me, and this is, these, these sort of things are always in the car, okay, you can pop these in the bag with you if you want to carry them around, but these are, these are what you would call non-essential essentials, okay, these are bits that you might need for a day out, but you don't necessarily need to sling over your shoulder and take them out with you, these can sit in the car because you can come back and forwards to the car, but it's worth showing, so in this box here, we've got mainly spares and bits and pieces, okay, um, suntan lotion, um, uh, sun protection, always, always, always sun protection um, and a selection of different strengths, 15, 30 and 50 there. If you spend any amount of time on the water, you should always have sun protection with you. Um, hand sanitizer, again, something we're going to have to carry forever and ever and ever again now, I think. Uh, a few spare braided loops in the box there. Um, if you've done your preparation right before you go out for your day's fishing, the night before, the day before, especially if you're going out once a week, once a month, spend the time doing a bit of prep, okay, because it's your day out, so you're going to want to utilise as much time as you can on the lake. So make sure your braided loops aren't, aren't worn, they're, they're, they're not going to slip, nothing's wrong with them. Every now and again something does happen. So I always carry some spare braided loops in there in this bag and there's a little bit of super glue there as well, handy for doing a million different jobs with. Um, a little fish counter there. This is for the competitions, we use these little fish counters. More spare gink in there, another pair of spare scissors, uh, a little bit of line treatment should I need it. Um, that's just to um, uh, clean up the lines. More when you're going away for the weekend, if you've been fishing over muddy banks, muddy shore, and sometimes you get some really atrocious conditions, then it's worth having uh, a, bit, a little bit of line treatment with you so you can just take care of your floating lines when you get back to the hotel in the evening. Um, little Swiss Army knife because they're handy. Um, and that's about it. So that bag can carry around with you, but I would advise leaving it in the car. It's just additional weight. It's stuff that you're not going to need. Um, you, all of these fisheries, you're not too far away from the car. You know, you, you don't move too far away from the car, so leave this in the car, but there are essentials you need to take with you. Um, I've also got a little, um, uh, a little telescope thing here as well little uh, monocular thing here as well which is handy when you're on the reservoirs just have a little look around um, see what's occurring, see what's going on uh, it's also nice to have if you're in a bit of bird watching and the fishing's a little bit slow as well uh, the other essential bit of equipment of course is a flask never leave home without it, good thermos flask there, always got a hot drink full of coffee in there especially during the winter uh, and that will tuck in there nicely, that goes in there nicely into your box and into your bag um, so I think that's probably about covered it, I haven't got any other little secrets in there, there's no little bits and pieces I've been missing um, I do try to keep things slim line and key down I know to some of you this might still see a lot of, seem like a lot of gear but I could carry around a lot more and I do commonly see people carrying around bags and bags and bags of gear on bank fishing and I don't think you need it um, try to keep things as organized as possible have enough spares but not too many and uh, and you should be uh, you should be right. I'll, uh, so there we go, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that was uh, informative, and you might find that a little bit useful. It was a pretty quick video, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys and girls out there do a similar sort of thing with your fishing bags. But if not, um, uh, you might have picked up a few little tips here and a few little ideas for how to organise stuff. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please click like and click subscribe, and I'll get back to you. Um, 
I'm sure on the weekend with a time video or something. And somewhere down the line, I'll give you a little look into the competition box and the competition setup before we get back out in the reservoir again. Thanks a lot, folks. Goodbye.